Hi, and welcome to Sparkle Tart. Good morning, gorgeous people. Today, I'm going to be having another play with my beautiful Jane Davenport watercolor set. And this is the little wrist set that I showed you in my last video. You can see it here if you missed it. And today, we're going to be having a look at all of the different colors that you can make with just those one set of 12 paints. Yep, we're doing a color grid. Color grids are a little bit time consuming and a little bit fiddly, but they are absolutely worth it. So let me show you exactly what you can do to get all those beautiful colors and mix your own color grid. So this is the Jane Davenport Art Time watercolor set called Janeisms. It's a set of 12 watercolor pans that are beautiful and opaque, nice and creamy, and come in a stunning little palette with a really useful little wrist band that you can put it on. Not, I haven't seen anything like these. The colors are bold and bright, and you can mix these 12 colors to get over 120. Yes, over 120 new shades. Now, a lot of them are blues and greens and turquoises, but hey, I love those colors. Let's give it a workout. I've started by creating the color swatch card included with the set, just so I can see what each of the colors looks like individually. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is make a color mixing chart. Now, basically all that you need to do is draw a box that will fit. If you've got 12 paints, it'll have 13 rows and 13 columns. Um, and it can be any size you like. I'm making each box one centimeter wide and one centimeter high. So I get a nice small grid. You might like to do one inch boxes um, so that you've got a bit more room to play with the color. So there are 12 colors of paint in this set and this is all I'm using. I'm just mixing these colors together and not adding a different color set. So I've got the names listed across the top in short form because I didn't have enough space and then in their full name down the side. Now, when coloring your color mixing chart, you need to make uh, one decision right up at the front. Are you going to have the strong opaque color across the rows horizontally or down the columns? So for mine, I've got the strongest color across that top horizontal row. So across that very first row, put the pure form of each color in its darkest option. Then down the side, um, I've got a more watery version of each of the colors. When it comes to color mixing, start by making a diagonal swatch of each of the colors. Now, for example, when you're mixing a uh, fainting couch with fainting couch, Obviously, it's the same color. So where those two colors meet on your color chart, just add in a nice, pure form of that color. Make sure you're using a clean brush. Just putting that out there, <clears throat> it's very easy to muddle it up. I make sure I've cleaned my brush between each color. So I'm getting a true color for that diagonal row. Once that's done, it's time to start mixing the colors together to see what other colors you can make from the set. So what I've done is I've put um, one little drop of pure color on my palette for each square I need to color in for that color. So for Gather Sunshine, I've got 12 boxes down I need to color and 12 across. So I've got 24 little spots of Gather Sunshine on my palette. I'm going to grab Kindness Matters and add that to one spot of color, making sure that the Kindness Matters is the most dominant color and then put that in the first row down where I'm mixing Gather Sunshine and Kindness Matters. You don't want all of these to be the same exact color, otherwise you don't really see the amount of colors you can make. So make sure that when you mix those two colors together again, you do it in a different proportion. So this time I'll make sure that Gather Sunshine is the most dominant color and Kindness Matters is sort of a little bit added to it. And I'm putting that along my bottom row. Basically, uh, across each row, that name is the most dominant color. So on the row where kindness matters is the color name, kindness matters is the color that is the dominant color mixed with any other color. 
So for example, when you've mixed kindness matters and trust the mess, I've made sure kindness matters is the dominant color in that color combination. If you move further down the page, for example, to the yellow section where it's got gather sunshine, even though kindness matters and gather sunshine are mixed together, in this row, I've made sure that gather sunshine is the most dominant color and the kindness matters is the secondary color. Um, so basically when I say dominant color, it means there's more of that color in the mixture. Um, when I say secondary color, it means there's less of that color in the mixture. So if I'm going along, for example, the row that says fainting couch, if I go along to where fainting couch meets with trust the mess, fainting couch on that row is the dominant color. If I move down, of course, these are all the same colors. So if I move down to where I've got uh, trust the mess on that row, when I get to where it meets with fainting couch, which of course are the same two colors, I'll make sure that trust the mess is the dominant color. So there's more of trust the mess in that mix. So you can go along each row and have a look and see what those two colors have created. And each of those colors will be different because you've mixed them in a different proportion. Now, of course, you could do this in a large variety of proportions. So you could mix two parts trust the mess to one part dab and peep, or three parts trust the mess to one part dab and peep. So my centimeter by centimeter grid is only showing a small fraction of colors you can actually create by mixing these colors together. To finish your color grid, continue mixing until each squib is filled with color. You'll end up mixing each color combination twice. Make sure that you make them slightly different by keeping the color that's on the horizontal row the dominant color. Now I've just gone sort of starting from the outside, working my way in. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Um, just make sure that you've got the correct color mix in the correct box and you'll see a beautiful blend of colors that's possible with just these 12 colored paints. All right, so I think we can agree I've given my little tiny um, Janeism's Art Time watercolor palette a bit of a workout and I love it. So from the original set of colors of 12, you can make 124 beautiful color mixes. Well, not quite because some of these are the originals. While some of them are quite similar because there's a few different purples and a few different green and turquoise colors, they're gorgeous. Anyway, I absolutely love this. Let me give you a look at the colors that you can create up close. So the name on the side here is the most dominant color as you go across. So all across the kindness matters will be the most dominant color in the mix. And some of these, depending on the color it's mixing with, turn out stronger than others. And then as you go down, for example, then gather sunshine is the most dominant color. So even though you've got sunshine here and hair, when you mix gather sunshine and hair, this one is the more yellow. So we've got be the hair and sunshine, then the be the hair, the green, is the more dominant color. So you can see the difference between the two. As you move across, whatever is listed on the side is always the most dominant color. And I've done my color mix that way. Now I've decided not to go for perfection here. I've decided to stop trying to be quite so perfect in general because it was not bringing me much happiness because perfection's very difficult to achieve. So when I had a little, um, squiggle with my um, pen doing the original lines or when the line wasn't perfect I'm just continuing on and enjoying creating rather than beating myself up for not having done a perfect grid to begin with and you know what in the end result that's not really bothering me as much as it used to so I'm actually doing pretty well on this letting go of perfection and instead what I've got is a beautiful useful color chart and whenever I would like to go and make a new color blend, I can pop along here and see what I'm looking for. For example, this beautiful dusty blue right here. I know that it was made from Artemologist and Trust the Mess. And I know because of the name here that it was more heavy on the Artemologist color. So this gorgeous dark blue is a mix of that wonderful turquoise and purple and it's gorgeous and I know how to make it again because I have my references right there. So if I want to mix that gorgeous color 
with perhaps something hmm, in the sagey tones for some lavender. I can head over here. See, I've got this wonderful grayish green as a dark color with a mix of Be The Hair and Start The Art, and I can use that. Or pop down here where I've mixed Gather Sunshine and Artemologist and get a paler version. Um, and I've got a wonderful lavender color palette. And honestly, I might have to do much, much more of these little color grids because it is so cute. It was super relaxing to do. And it's really easy to see sort of what color mixes you can make. So I can really see the advantage in doing these. And a few of them are left too wet. So I've got one color bleeding into the next. Honestly, I love this. I love how it looks. You can still see what the color might have been in both of those, but it's just those unexpected pops of gorgeousness that I'm really enjoying. So this was so, so useful to do. It really gave those colors a workout. I can see easily what I can create with those 12 colors from the Jainism's watercolor set. So to quote a Jainism, let's start the art. I really hope you've enjoyed watching how this color grid was made and got a few ideas about how you can do this for yourself. They open a whole new world of watercolor. These grids are a lot of fun because you can see all the different colors you can make with just the paints you already have. Um, and unlike me, you, you might not need every single watercolor paint. <laughs> so have a great day everyone and I hope you've enjoyed my video. Bye. To see more of my videos, make sure that you subscribe and click the alert notifications bell. Thank you for watching.